values and working through the arithmetic and coming back to this derivation later on when you feel like you have a better grasp of what's going on. But th for those of you who are interested, who are a little bit more comfortable with algebra, um, I wanted to just go into where it comes from. So, and of course, as always, if you are not learning this or you've never learned this or if this stuff just gives you a massive headache, then feel free to just zone out. So 
So what am I going to add? Well, the rule of thumb in general, if this coefficient is 1, is to do half of my middle term, okay, half of the coefficient of my x here, and then square it. So what's half of b over a? That's b over 2a. But I'm going to square that. So I'm going to do b over 2a squared. Okay. But if I add the, can you see that? I hope so. Uh, let me write it bigger. <laughs> b over 2a squared. But if I add that on this side, of course, algebraically, I have to add it on this side as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Okay. So we're going to clean that up a little bit. So I have x squared plus b x squared plus b over a x plus and then this b over 2a squared remember we have to use our exponent rules so we have b squared over actually we don't really need to do that on this side sorry <laughs> we can just leave it like that but on this side I can I can simplify it to b squared This is just our uh, exponent rules, right? We can square the top and square the bottom, but 2a squared is 2 squared times a squared, which is 4a squared. And the reason I said that you don't actually have to simplify the same thing on the left side is because we can look at this and we know that to make it, like we added the b over 2a squared to make this whole thing a perfect square. So we can actually write this as b, um, x plus b over 2a all squared. That is our perfect square. And so it doesn't do us any good to write it as b squared, b squared over 4a squared. It doesn't do anything, right? This actually kind of helps us visualize what's happening. So if we were to multiply this back out, we would get x squared plus 2 times x times b over 2a, which the 2's cancel. So you get b over ax, which is this, and then plus this thing squared, which is b over 2a squared, right? And then on the right side, we get negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. So that's why I simplified it on the right side, but not on the left side, okay? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so like I said, uh, this completing the square and factoring it back out um, might not make sense if you're not familiar with completing the square or multiplying, like squaring a binomial, which is a special case of the FOIL method and all that. But um, if you're following along now, I'm hoping that everything is super clear. Uh, so then the next thing is we can take, now that we have a perfect square, we can take the plus or minus square root on both sides. So, x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of um, negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. Yikes, right? But it's not so bad. We're actually already almost there. We take the plus or minus square root on both sides because, um, for example, like y squared equals 16, for example, um, y is plus or minus the square root of 16, so plus or minus 4, because the square of a negative is still positive, so the square of the negative root is still positive, which is still what we're looking for, so that's where the plus or minus comes from. So now it's a matter of just simplifying this. Um, on this side, we can have a common um, common denominator, so plus or minus the square root of 4a squared, because we're adding fractions here. So if we're going to have a common denominator, we have 4a squared already. So I'm actually going to go ahead and flip the order here. So I'm going to have a b squared minus, and then how do I get from a to 4a squared, I have to multiply by 4a on the top and the bottom. So I have 4ac. This is starting to look familiar now, isn't it? Isn't it? So basically now I have x. I'm going to move this negative or this b over 2a over to the other side. So it was, it was a plus b over 2a. So when I move it, it's a minus b over 2a. So x equals minus b over 2a plus 
plus or minus and then we have to know our square root rules but if you do we know that this is minus 4ac and then the square root so you can take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator and the square root of 4a squared is 2a since this is a fraction and we have um, a common denominator, we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's it. That's our actual equation, right? <laughs> this was a little bit of a mess, wasn't it? Um, but, okay, so let's just kind of walk through this again. So we start with our default um, general equation. That's what we're working with, and we want to get to this. So the idea is we're solving any equation of this form in terms of x. So our goal is to isolate x as it always is when we're solving a or any kind of equation, any algebraic equation, right? We want to isolate our variable on one side. It's just that in this particular case, because we have a very complicated formula in terms of x, it's not just linear, it's quadratic now. We have to be clever in how we isolate that x. So we can't just have x squared on one side and x on the other, because we'll also have some constant terms, and that's kind of messy. So the only way to really generally go about it is to complete the square so that we have one term that we're working with squared. So, in this case, the way I did it was I wanted to move c over to the other side. Might as well move the coefficient to the other side. Um, that way we're working with just this pretty formula, x squared plus b over ax equals negative c over a. I did it that way so that we have all of our x terms right here. It's very clear. We have a constant right here. It's messy, but it's okay. It's still a constant. So now we know exactly what we're trying to complete. So we need to add something to this side and this side. We're going to add it specifically based on what we need to complete this square. And in this case, the rule is to have the b over a and then square it. So it's b over 2a squared, all squared. So I added that on this side, but if I do that on e equation, I have to do it on the other side as well. So I went ahead and did that, added on both sides, but um, on the left side I kept it with the same, um, the same form that I had it when I added it because it makes it very clear how I'm going to write that as a perfect square. Um, and then in my mind I can, you know, multiply this back out, uh, square the binomial using our, you know, x squared plus 2ax plus a squared formula, <laughs> not this a, but just in general, any kind of constant, um, to see that it actually is equal to this left side, but the right side I want to simplify out. So I multiplied, I had to use my exponent rules, if I have a fraction squared, I square both the top and the bottom. I, um, from there, I just simplified it, and then if I have something squared, I can take the plus or minus square root on both sides based on the fact that it's something squared, so a negative number squared is also um, that value. So you need to take the plus or minus square root, just because like the square of negative 1 is 1 as well. So I take the plus or minus square root on both sides. Um, and then I do a little bit more simplification based on adding with um, trying to find a common denominator, right? That's what I was doing here. Uh, this part might be kind of, you know, I kind of combined a lot of steps in one, but basically I found the common denominator between a and 4a squared, which is 4a squared, because 4a times a is 4a squared. So I multiply by 4a on the top and the bottom. And then I just switch the order to make it match up the b squared minus 4ac. So here, the 1 to 1 would be negative 4ac plus b squared, but you can rewrite that. And I rewrote it because that's our goal. That was like our original thing that we're trying to get is b squared minus 4ac. So I just algebraically simplified that. Then the very last thing you need to do is to move this minus b over 2a over to the other side by subtracting it. Uh, or if you want to do it longhand, you can subtract b over 2a on both sides and see that this is 
to have a list of your steps and then have a list of your reasoning for them. That way you know that why each step is um, taken. So, uh, 